Hi, I'm Dr. Dante Loretta, and I'm here to introduce you to our new game, Downlink, the game of planetary discovery. Let's start with an overview of the different game components. In the center of the table, we have our game board, which represents the solar system and all the different destinations that you can explore in this game. Every game, there'll be three different targets that are identified for your scientific exploration. There'll be one from the inner solar system, in this game, we'll be going after my favorite location, asteroid Bennu. The middle solar system, in this case, we're going to the giant planet Jupiter. And in the outer solar system, we're going to the dwarf planet Pluto. Let's take a look at this card real quick because there's a lot of interesting information on here. At the top, you see three different boxes for landing, orbiting, or roving around Pluto and it indicates the number of points you can score. If you delivered a lander to Pluto, you would score eight points. Pretty good because the game is playing up to 30 points, so that's getting you a long way towards victory. Orbiting would score you seven, and roving would score you nine. And then at the bottom, you see these four different symbols. These represent the different kinds of science that you can do at Pluto. You can do cosmochemistry, geophysics, planetary geology, or atmospheric science. And a lot of people might not know that, that Pluto does have an atmosphere. It's very tenuous and actually freezes out when it gets really far away from the sun. Still a lot of exciting science to do there. The scientific discoveries are indicated with the five different sets of downlink cards, representing astrobiology, atmospheric science, cosmochemistry, geophysics, and planetary geology. So when you get a spacecraft to Pluto, if it has the cosmochemistry symbol on the instrument, matches that on Pluto, you would draw the cosmochemistry card, making a scientific discovery. In this case, you would find calcophile abundances, a nice scientific term that you will learn about not only by playing the game, but because our rule book contains a lot of great scientific information about the solar system and the kinds of science we do as we explore. Over here, we have our playing cards. They're set up for the beginning of the game. You have your draw pile. Eventually, as the game plays out, there'll be a TMC discard pile, and I'll explain what that means in a little bit. And then here is the market. You're going to be able to trade with this set of five face-up cards to optimize your hand each turn. There's a set of spacecraft tokens, which indicates where you are in the solar system. So for example, if we had our lander preparing for launch, it would be sitting on the Earth. And then after launch and through a series of maneuvers, it would actually move through the solar system, ultimately reaching its destination. In this case, we'll be trying to get it all the way to the surface of Pluto to do our science. There's a set of eight custom engraved dice, which you will roll when you're trying to launch a rocket, maneuver a spacecraft through the solar system, or downlink scientific data from a science instrument. Every player in the game has their own player mat, which represents their ground system. And you train your different teams in this game. You have your launch team, your spacecraft team, and your science team. The more training that you do, the better the odds are of a successful dice roll. The game is built for two to six players, so there's uh, game mats for everybody in the game. Every player has resources that they have to manage and strategically allocate as they play. Those are indicated with these colored resource cubes, which at the beginning of the game are all in the available resources box of your ground system. As the game progresses, you're going to deploy these to build rockets or spacecraft to indicate that you've trained your team or arrived at a scientific destination. We have a set of science discovery cards where you also score points by getting the right combinations of the science downlink. And then for convenience, we have a nice quick summary card where you can understand what you do on your turn, the different kinds of actions that you have available, and the different ways that you can score points. Let's go over a player turn on downlink. The quick summary card guides you through the four different phases of your turn. Phase one is trading cards. Well, what does that mean? You start out with a hand of six cards. That'll be true every turn. And the first thing you need to do is assemble what we call a TMC triplet. Every card has either a T, an M, or a C in its upper left corner. The cards are dual use, so that aspect is independent of the other elements, for example, indicating whether it's a science instrument, a rocket, a ground system, etc. When I'm looking at my card, it's early in the game, nothing has been played yet, and I want to get a rocket out on the board, so I want to make sure I save that for my action phase. 
I also have a couple team training cards here, which are going to be very valuable because those will influence the dice roll, giving me higher probability of success. So what's left are two T's and one C. I need to find an M card. Fortunately, when I look at the market, which is where I can trade with, I see that there's an M either as a scientific instrument or as a rover. Neither one of them really matters to me as long as I get that letter. So I'm going to go ahead and trade my 34 meter antenna back into the market, taking the medium rover, giving me a TMC triplet, which then goes into the discard pile. You do want to be a little strategic about what you place into that pile because not only can you go back in there as one of your actions and retrieve a card, but other players can as well. So you have to think about what are you leaving open for your opponents. Now that we finished phase one, we move to phase two. Phase two is to discard the TMC triplet and perform the actions. There are a lot of different actions that you can do in this game, giving you a lot of choice and feeding into the strategy of the game. You only get three per turn, so let's look at what we can do. Number one, retrieve a card from the TMC discard pile. If there's something that I really needed to move forward in the game, I could actually go through that pile, pick the one card, making it available for a future action. Another option is to build a rocket. In this case, I do have the H-2A vehicle from the Japanese Space Agency. I want to get that on the board. I place that next to its launch site, which is the Hanigashima Space Center in Japan. And then I have to spend four of my resource cubes in order to get that out on the board. So I'm doing well. I've got a rocket that's going to be able to score me points in the future. I'm going to build up the capabilities of my team. So first I'm going to play a readiness test. I can choose, do I want my launch team to be ready, my spacecraft team, or my science team? Since I just built the rocket, I want to put that on my launch team. And I'm also going to gain an experience team, again, to go onto my launch team. Now I've increased the likelihood of success. Other options for your actions are to build a spacecraft. So let's say that the green player went ahead and built that small orbiter. They would place three of their resource cubes there, and the yellow player put a microwave spectrometer onto that spacecraft, requiring them to allocate four of their resources. So you can see right away, it's a somewhat cooperative game. You are trying to win, you are trying to score the most points, but as soon as you play one of these elements out on the board, you have these connectors that open up. On their turns, other players can latch on. So the green player is hoping that you will launch them into space, beginning their journey of exploration. We indicate that the orbiter is now in development by taking its token and placing it on the Earth. Other actions that you have available to you are to enhance your ground system. We did that by playing our readiness tests and our experienced teams. You can also play antenna cards, giving you additional resources when you're trying to downlink data from your instrument. You can add resource cubes to a component on Earth, one or two, your choice. So if I was the rocket provider, I might say I want to provide a little more capability, possibly scoring more points, adding two resource cubes. I couldn't add a resource cube to the orbiter or to the instrument because I don't have one of my cubes on there. However, one of my options is to transfer resource cubes across a connector. And this is where it gets pretty strategic because now I could be thinking, well, I really do want to get some resources into outer space. As soon as I get a resource cube on that card, I have the opportunity to control that element during my turn. So I might take an action to say, I'm going to take those two resource cubes across that connector. Now I'm on that orbiter. The green player could do the same kind of thing. They say, hey, red player, you're not taking uh, this launch seriously. I'm going to bring one of my cubes across the connector. Now I have the opportunity to launch the vehicle. That might actually spur me into action to get the, the launch uh, off the ground so that I can score those points for myself. Now we're going to try to do some science at the asteroid. It's the yellow player's turn. The spacecraft has arrived at asteroid Bennu. They have four tokens on their science instrument. These are where the antenna cards come into play. The yellow player can play the 70 meter antenna, allowing them to take three of their available resources and transfer them to their antenna box. These also provide dice rolls, just like playing 
resource cubes off of their instrument. So they have an instrument, the microwave spectrometer, that's capable of making measurements in astrobiology or cosmochemistry. They decide to spend two resources off the instrument, two resources off of their antenna to roll four dice. They're hoping for antenna symbols in this case. They have one, two antennas. They have also performed a readiness test, so they're capable of re-rolling. They're gonna re-roll both of these, picking up two more antennas. When we look at the asteroid Bennu card, we see that it's capable of cosmochemistry, geophysics, astrobiology, or geology. The science instrument does astrobiology and cosmochemistry. So we're gonna go ahead and pull two cards from each pile. Scoring us four points. The next thing you can do in phase three is make scientific discoveries. The yellow player is trying to discover complex prebiotic molecules to score five points. That requires two chemistry cards, one biology card to complete that scientific discovery. And then finally, at the end of the phase, you restore your hand back to six cards, setting you up for your next turn. The game ends when one player reaches 30 points, triggering a final turn for all of the remaining players. I hope you enjoyed this description of the downlink game and you're ready to begin your journey of solar system exploration.